Okay, well, let's start doing problems here. Uh, again, this is where the real learning happens, right? Exercise 11.1, learning objective one, a basic segmented income statement. Honeyville Hardware produces and sells two products for professional landscapers, shovels and rakes. Revenue and cost information relating to the products follow. And I've replicated it up here on the screen at the very top corner. You can see where my cursor is rapidly moving around. Well, there it is. Let's keep reading. Common fixed expenses in the company total $15,000 annually. Last year, the company produced and sold 3,500 shovels and 5,000 rakes. Required, prepare a contribution form at income statement for the year, segmented by product lines. All right, so that's fairly easy enough to do. Let's just uh, get our format down, and we have by product, we have shovels, and we have rakes. And of course, we're going to have one column for our total. That's his oh, total. There we go. So let's begin. What do we know? Sales. And we're told that we sold 3,500 shovels. We can see the price per shovel is $10, so we know we have $35,000 in revenue for shovels. We sold 5,000 rakes at $21 a rake. So we have $105,000. If we total that across, we have $140. That's fairly straightforward. The rest is uh, 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 at least a contribution margin. We've seen many, many times we subtract our variable costs. Our variable costs are $12 per rake. 5,000 of them is $60,000, which would give us a contribution margin on rakes of $45,000. We have 3,500 shovels at $6.50 a shovel. We just do the multiplication. We'll get 22,750. Give us a contribution of margin of 12,250. And 60 and 22,750 will give us a total variable cost of 82,750. And that equals our contribution margin. Our total contribution margin will be 57,250. That's where the similarity ends. Now, we subtract our fixed costs. However, we have traceable first. Remember, we'll subtract our traceable fixed costs. And we're told for rakes, it's 25,000. And we're told for shovels, it's 8,000. So our total traceable costs are 33 thousand dollars so that will give us twenty thousand of segment profit here of segment operating profit here we have four thousand two hundred and fifty and that uh, if we subtract this total these two should add up uh, along with this subtraction twenty four thousand two hundred and fifty we would call this where it's our product where we're dividing our uh, segments by product so we would call this a product segment margin let's be careful about the word margin here here we have our contribution margin take off our traceable fixed costs we have a segment margin and what kind of segment margin is will be told to us by the way we break down segments. Now, if this were by geographic region, let's say north and south, this would be called a geographical segment margin or geographic segment margin, whatever, whatever you break it down by. But that's our product segment margin. Now we can deduct our common uh, fixed costs. And our common fixed costs, we're told, are 15000 Notice common only gets deducted from the total. Once we, once we get past traceable, we're done with the segments. We're at the total amount. And, of course, it's just subtraction after that. This is our operating income. There we go. That was a fairly straightforward one. So now we've seen uh, traceable and common um, in the context of an actual problem. Exercise 11.2 is a segmented income statement. Learning objective one still. Bovine Company, a wholesale distributor of umbrellas, has been experience, experiencing losses for some time 
as shown by its most recent monthly contribution format income statement. And in the top uh, uh, of the screen, you'll see that I've replicated it for you right here. We have a loss of $97,000. In an effort to isolate the problem, the president has asked for an income statement segmented by geographic market. You'll see that I've written that out here. And I've replicated some of the information give, given to us already. Sales total of 2 million, south, central, and north. So we have three geographic regions. Number one, required prepare a contribution form and income statement segmented by geographic market as requested by the president. Now, the information given to us also gives us variable expenses as a percentage of sales. I haven't put that down. And it, and it gives us the traceable fixed costs. We'll get to that when we get to that, but I haven't uh, put it on the screen here yet. So let's prepare the contribution format income statement for the segments. So first thing we want to do is we subtract our variable costs. And we are told, uh, according to the, uh, uh, to the problem, that our uh, variable costs as a percentage of sales in the north is 40%. So 40% of 600,000 will be 240,000. We're told in central, our variable costs run 30% of sales. So that'll also be 240,000. And in the south, our variable costs run 52% of sales. So that's really out of line, isn't it? Anyways, that comes to $312,000. So we're in a position to calculate our contribution margins. If we add the three of these across, we'll get to $792,000. let us check if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So we have our $2 million, our seven ninety two. dollars That should come to $1,208,000. So if we calculate our contribution margin for each of these, we have three sixty. dollars Here we have... 560,000 and here we have 288,000 and if you add these across you should get 1,208,000 so we have a nice little check in here right so let's switch colors because now we're switching over to a different type of style we're going to take off our fixed costs but we're going to do it with traceable first so let's take off our traceable costs and we're told that in the north they total 300,000 in the central market, they total 530000 And in the southern market, they total 320000 So if we add these three across, we get to 1150000 Notice our fixed costs are 1305000 So there's 155 unaccounted for as of yet. We'll see if that makes sense when we get to our common fixed costs. So... We are now in a position to calculate a segment margin. So let's write that down. We'll just write that down for now. This is our segment margin. We have 60,000 in the northern region. We have 30,000 in our central market. And we have negative 32,000 in our southern market. So we're losing money in the southern market right away. We know that. Chances are it's because our variable costs are 52% of sales, whereas they're only 40 and 30% in the other two markets. I'm already jumping ahead with some analysis here, right? So if we add this up, uh, we, the 30 and the 32 cancel out. We're too short off the 60, makes 58. Don't worry how I did that. You could just add it up. 60 and 30 is 90 minus 32 brings you back to 58. So that is our segment margin. But what type of segment margin is it? It's a geographic segment margin. Geographic segment margin. Uh, from that, we will deduct our common fixed costs, which we're not given. We're not told what our common fixed costs are, but we know we must end with an operating income of negative $97,000. So, we could just add the 58 to the absolute value here of 97, and that would give us $155,000. Does that make sense? Well, 155 and the 1.150 would give us 1,305,000 in total fixed costs, and that's exactly what we have. We've just taken the 1.305 and spread it out into traceable and common fixed costs. So have a look here. Even if we get rid of the south, which is losing money. 
that'll only shore up $32,000. We're still losing $65,000 in the rest of the company. So it's not that one segment is a problem. There's a bigger problem because even if we get rid of this segment, we only improve our bottom line by $32,000. So we got some work to do here, right? Let's read part two of this question. The company sales manager believes that sales in the central geographic market, which is this one here, could increase by 15% if monthly advertising is increased by 25,000. Would you recommend the increased advertising? Show computations to support your answer. Well, the first thing we have to understand and recognize is if we spend $25,000 in the central market and advertising expense is a fixed cost, but that is a completely traceable cost to the cent central market. So our traceable fixed costs will go up here, but our common fixed costs won't. So if we can increase sales by 15% here and fixed costs go up by 25, we want to see, does it increase our segment margin? So step number one. Step number one is figure out what happens to contribution margin. Well, we were told that the variable costs represent 30% of sales, which means our contribution margin represents 70% of sales. So we don't have to draw write out a whole new column. We can just use the formula we learned in one of the earlier chapters that a change, the, ch the dollar change in sales times the contribution margin ratio will equal our change in contribution margin. We know our contribution margin ratio is 0.7. The change in sales is 15%. 15% 15 of 800,000 is $120,000 which means our contribution margin ratio will increase by $84,000. But let's go to step two and figure out what the effect is on the overall geographic segment margin. If our contribution margin increases by $84,000, we need to take off our change in traceable fixed costs, which is $25,000. Again, this is just the change in contribution margin. And once we subtract the two, uh, we'll get 84,000 uh, minus the 25, we'll get $59,000. sorry, $59,000. Let's just recorrect that. Increase. So that the segment, the geographic segment margin, would increase by $59,000 if we increase our advertising cost by 25,000 and it does have the required effect that we want which is a 15 percent increase so the answer is yes you should do that now if we increase this by 59,000 notice that we still don't solve the 97 so we have two decisions we can get rid of the south that would bring us down to would have a deficit of 65,000 Increase our advertising here for an increase of 59. We still have a deficit of $6,000. So even though the question's not asking for this, you should be able to think this through. It appears that there's something bigger going on than just the South underselling. It's probably a matter of our costs, our traceable fixed costs appear to be out of line here. Uh, we have 300,000 to support 360 of sales, but we have 530,000. They jump significantly in the central market. And even though they don't drop that much, uh, they're still higher in the south market than they are in the north. It's not translating into higher margins. So there is something with the fixed costs and the contribution uh, margin ratios are probably a little light. They're probably nice in the central, 30%. Uh, um, variable cost, but we have 40% in the north, why the extra 10%? I'd want to know that. If we're making the same umbrella, why the extra 10? And going from 30 to 52% in the south, why the extra 22? So the manager in the south better talk to the central manager, and the manager in the north better talk to the central manager and say, how are you doing it? Because we can't, so tell us how you're doing it, and you could probably fix that up. I know the question didn't ask for that, that's just some extra analysis to see how we interpret these things. There we go. There's 11.2.